All right, this is a video on the sword bayonet 1888. This one specifically is the Mark III. So first of all, before I get into the facts, I'll give you a rundown of the bayonet. Probably would have seen these before. They have this very specific dagger style hollow ground blade. A short cross piece with a little, I guess, I don't know what you would call that on there. And then they have this very interesting squared pommel on them, which fits onto the Long Lee rifle, which was the first rifle in the Lee Enfield series. Alright, so on this one, you can say that it was made on the second, well, the second month of 1903, and it has the cipher of King Edward right there who didn't reign for very long, so bayonets with his cipher on them are always pretty collectible. On the other side, you can see the broad arrow or military acceptance stamp, EFD, which is Enfield, who produced this bayonet, an Enfield inspection stamp, and a Ben test mark right at the bottom there, which is just the cross. Down on the bottom here, on the pommel, we have a unit marking. This is to the 6th Lancashire Fusiliers, and it's rifle number 394. Sorry, I'm trying to get that to focus. There we go. There's also some inspection stamps on the grips, which are barely visible anymore, but they are there. And then going over to the scabbard, it's just your basic land pattern scabbard. This is a Mark I. On the back we can get some info. This was originally made in 1890, so for an earlier model of the 1888. Um, there's not much else I can pick up off there. There's an, ex an inspection stamp above that and a T there, which might have been territorial forces, but I'm not too sure on that one. Um, it's basic basically like you would see for most 1907 scabbards, except it's quite a bit shorter. They also modified these and used them for the 1903. It's just a piece of leather with one seam down the back, and then the chat is just steel mounted on with two, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word, um, staples for better, better lack of the term. Same with the bottom, just a piece of steel stapled on twice. Now this one does have a rifle marking on there which does not match the, uh, the bayonet so this is clearly put on at some later stage. So the bayonet itself was approved on the 23rd of September 1901 and this is for the Mark III specifically. I won't be getting into the Mark II and the Mark I, which had two separate types. So the only difference between this one and the earlier ones is the tang, the pommel, and the cross piece, which were browned. And in this case, it looks like they've been blued later on, but you still can see a hint of the browning underneath in certain lights. Um, they're also fixed with the grips with the same type of screws that you would find on a 1903 and very similar to the 1907 pattern. Um, the reason for this was they could take the grips off and rebrown all of this whenever they needed to, compared to the older models which were pinned in with brass, so the grips were there to stay. Um, some Mark III's were converted from the earlier ones. I don't believe this one was, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and then the conversions for the Mark I will have no clearance hold because it was originally down here by the grip, which is now covered. Uh, no new holes were really required for the clearance hold on these because they got rid of the cleaning rod, which would have sat right up through the handle in the original Mark I's and Mark II's. So as I said earlier, the screws for these are the same, pretty much the same as the pattern 1903 screws, which I believe are oil blued. And conversions of the Mark 1s and 2s were done at the Royal Small Arms Factory. 
Later on, some conversions were done by Greener, but these were only for commercial use and not official military conversions. So Enfield, who produced this one's numbers for the total production of the 1888 sword bayonets, are as follows. From 1889 to 1900, or 1890, sorry, the Mark I first type, they produced 25,000 of them. From 1890 to 1900, the Mark I second type, they produced 575,000 of them. From 1899 to 1903, the Mark II, they produced 236,000 of them. And from nine, this one here, the Mark III, from 1901 to 1904, they produced 65,003, which is a bit of an interesting number to produce, but that's what we are left with. Um, some other markings I missed out on. There's an L on the back of the tang there. Unsure 100% what it's for, once again, could be land, land forces. And also on this uh, side of the, um, of the blade, there's another bend test mark. So they're really nice bayonets if you can get your hands on these. This one's in really good condition, apart from a little bit of blemishing on the blade there, as you can see. It might have been cleaned up at some point, but if they did, they did a very good job of it. So the reason that makes me believe that this is a new make and not a older conversion is we'll try to get a look in there with some light. You can see that it stops in there. There's not a hole that goes all the way through into the handle, which means that this was never intended to have a clearing rod fit into it. It was purely made to fit onto the Mark I Longley before uh, sorry, after the clearing rod was abolished. Now, I really do enjoy the 1888 sword bayonets, as the blade on them is just so different to everything else. And I really love that dagger look to them with the hollow ground ed edges. Now I'm yet to get a, um, a Mark I Longley to show you this fixed to the rifle, but hopefully in the future that can be done. Here's it inside the scabbard, just for an idea of what it would look like. And with this Mark I scabbard, they didn't have a built-in frog like they did with a lot of other uh, 1888 scabbards you'll see. This one would have required a separate frog attached to the webbing. But overall, it's a great condition bayonet and one that I am very glad to own. And especially since it's marked with Edward's crown, as I was saying, it's a, a nice touch to have on a bayonet from this era, because not long after it changed to George and stayed as a children crown for quite a long while. And considering that they did make these into 1904, this one is a pretty late production, considering that the pattern 1903 was approved in 1903, I believe. And the only real difference is that, I'll show you in another video, as I have a converted one of these to an 03, is they changed the cross piece, or possibly not changed even the cross piece, but mainly the pommel, which has changed to the bird's head style that you more often see on British bayonets from post-1900 era. So yeah, if you come across any of these 1888s with the screws and not the rivets, I would highly recommend picking them up because they are rare and they are very collectible. Cheers for watching, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more videos.